Hi, here's something for the grown-ups. Today's episode is brought to you by RX Bar Kids. RX Bar Kids is a clean label snack bar made with real ingredients like fruits, nuts, and egg whites. They come in three flavors and are perfect as after-school snacks or for munching in the back seat when you're on the go. Find them at Target or go to rxbar.com forward slash alien and enter the promo code alien at checkout. That's rxbar.com forward slash alien and enter alien. Okay, that's enough for you grown-ups. Here's the show. Hi, and welcome to the Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. My name is Jonathan Messenger, and with me, as always, is my intro bot, Bebop. Hey, Bebop. Well, not always. What? You said, with me, as always, but last episode you tried to sneak it by me. I wasn't trying to sneak anything by you, Bebop, I promise. You were just in the backyard, and I didn't want to interrupt. I'll tell you what. We got an email here from a listener that I think would cheer you up. Are you ready? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, it's from Lucy in Madison, Wisconsin, and she says, Bebop, I love Bebop Tales so much. You're the best. But I have a question. You have time traveled and traveled in and out of dimensions a lot. Aren't you worried about how you might change history or other worlds? By jumping in and out? That's a really great question, Lucy. I, I'm sorry. I don't understand what she means. Well, you know, there's a theory that if you travel through time and you change just one minor thing, then you could alter history forever. Sometimes it's called the butterfly effect. Oh, I've heard of that. It's when you, like, lean in real close to someone and flutter your eyelashes on their cheek. <laughs> what? No, that is not it. And you don't have eyelashes. It's the theory that one small thing, say you in season one, taking that T-Rex out of his time, means maybe he didn't eat a particular dinosaur back in his time. Then that dinosaur did something it wouldn't have done because it would have been eaten, and then so on and so on until it builds up to a major change. Oh, totally, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. One small change leads to one enormous change hundreds of years later. Like, I took that dinosaur out, and eventually, computers were invented. Well, I'm not sure we could trace it back that- You totally can, and you are welcome. Bebop, that's not quite- I invented computers. (laughs) Okay, well, let's get into this episode, shall we? If you remember what happened last week- Finn and his friends were on their way to the planet where they hoped they would find the adults. Will they find what they're looking for? Find out in The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian, Season 3, Episode 11, Inside Out. When they had arrived on the planet, in front of a tall, windowless building. None of them wanted to get out of the pod. The planet was dark. Whatever sun lit it wasn't shining when they landed. The world seemed to be stuck in a permanent nighttime. The colors were all dulled, and the plants had no flowers on them, nothing to open and soak in the sun's rays. They sat in the pod for some time, trying to figure out what they should do. All right, Mr. Sparkles, said Vale. You've been leading us all over this galaxy, and we've just been following you, and for what? We've almost been eaten, zapped, and then eaten again. And now we're supposed to believe that Finn's mother is communicating to us through your weird rocks? Come on, tell us what's really going on. Spit it out. Vale, said Abigail, are you sure you really want to say spit it out to Mr. Sparkles? But Mr. Sparkles said nothing, or rather, vomited nothing, and the troop was in no hurry to enter the foreboding building in front of them. It looked like a factory, but there were no smokestacks or large delivery doors or anything that gave any impression that anyone worked there or even made anything. Abigail said what they were all thinking. 
This is going to sound silly, but it's like a sadness factory. It bums me out just looking at it. I'm going to say something that none of you are going to like, but please just hear me out, said Finn. I want to go in there alone. I know, I know, but it was a message from my mom. We don't even know if the other adults are there. And we don't know if it's a trap. And if it's a trap and we all walk into it, then we have no chance of surviving, of getting our parents back, of getting our lives back. No one said anything. You all know I'm right. We need to continue the mission of the Marlow. And if we all walk straight into a trap right now, then that's it. The mission is over. The Marlow will have failed. The explorers were silent, looking at the floor, the ceiling, out the window at that ominous building, anywhere to keep from looking at Finn. They all knew Finn was right. No one could meet his gaze. No one except Paige. <laughs> said Paige. Come on, you guys aren't buying this lone hero shtick, are you? You think we're going to send you, Finn, alone into that weird building that looks like a prison? f f f f fail jail said Vale. Ugh. Can't anyone think straight around here? said Paige. Look, you guys stay here. She's my mom, too. And yeah, I know she didn't address Mr. Sparkle's weird puke stone to me, but only because she didn't know that I was with you, and not because I'm younger than Finn, obviously. So the Caspians are going, and we're taking you too, Mr. Sparkles, because I think you are somehow at the center of all of this. Every part of Finn wanted to argue with his sister, but at the same time, he couldn't help but smile. Paige was the youngest of them all, but in a very real way, she was the strongest. That sounds fair, said Finn. Caspian's saving Caspian. You guys stay out here and maintain radio contact. We'll report back with what we find, and if we get into any trouble, you can all storm in. And if anything changes out here, you let us know. All right. Ready, Sergeant Caspian? Paige smiled at her brother. Ready, Cadet Caspian? Let's do this! The two stepped out of the pod as their friends all waved goodbye. Mr. Sparkles rode atop Finn's shoulders as they walked toward the big glass door in the center of the building. They were almost there when they heard the Explorer Pod door open and the unmistakable sound of rocket boosters firing behind them. Before they knew it, Foggy was standing beside them. Caspian's saving Caspian's right, he said. And if I'm not a Caspian... Then what am I? Finn and Paige smiled, and the three took one step toward the door, and it slid open. They held hands and walked through the door. Inside the building. Finn, Paige, and Foggy were all shocked by what they saw when they went inside the building. There were huge electric lights hanging from high ceilings. And the stone floor matched the stone on the walls, except for where it was covered in long rows of plush blue carpeting. They could see there were rooms and hallways beyond the large lobby they stood in. And strangest of all, there were people. People who looked just like them. People who also looked just like the people they'd encountered on the copycat planet. Should we ask one of these fine people where to find your mom? Said Foggy. I don't know if that's such a good idea, said Finn. What if they start copying what we say and we get into more trouble again? Let's just try to blend in. Blend in? Said Paige. Do you see any other kids here? Do you see any spacesuit wearing kids here? Do you see any spacesuit wearing kids with robots here? Do you see any spacesuit wearing kids with robots with blue alien babies on their shoulders here? Okay, I get it, said Finn. But what else are we supposed to do? We may not have to do anything, said Foggy. Look. And Paige and Finn 
looked where Foggy was pointing. There, at the end of a long stretch of blue carpet, all the way down on the other side of the lobby, walking out of one of the hallways, was Finn's mother. Mom! Mom! Paige and Finn yelled, and Captain Caspian smiled and waved, as if she had been planning to come down and greet them all along. Outside the building. The explorers were on high alert. Elias and Vali were inside the pod, checking the radar to see if anything approached. Abigail and Meg were on lookout outside. But so far, they saw nothing. Inside. Finn and Paige ran to their mother, who squatted down and gave her kids a hug. There you are, she said. I'm so glad you got my message. Captain Caspian stood up, and she looked strange to Finn. At first, he couldn't figure out what was different about her. But then he realized and laughed at himself for not noticing right away. She was out of her spacesuit. His mother was wearing brown pants and a blue sweater, a far cry from her captain's uniform. Mom, what's going on? said Finn. Why aren't you wearing your Marlowe uniform? What is this place? Come on, said Captain Caspian. I'll show you. Paige bounded alongside her mother, holding her hand. Finn looked at Foggy. You feel it too, don't you? There's something off here. Your mother looks well, said Foggy. But there's something sick about this place. Outside. Nothing was happening outside the building. Abigail and Meg had begun jogging in place to stay warm, and Vale and Elias had started arguing about whether the building was technically gray or silver. It was pretty boring out there. Inside. They walked with Captain Caspian into another large room. At first, they thought it was empty. But then, they saw on the other side of the room, in the shadows, a man. He seemed to be sitting at a large desk, raised off the floor like he was on stage. Come on, said Captain Caspian. I want to introduce you. They followed their mother through the room. There was no one there but the man at the other end. Mom, said Finn, introduce us to whom? Who is that? To me, said the man. But did he say it? Finn didn't actually see his lips move at all. He sat completely still, and it seemed as though his eyes were glowing red. Mom, said Finn, pulling Paige back from his mother's side and glancing quickly up at Foggy. What's going on here? This is your new home, said the man and Finn's mother at the same time. Outside. Nothing's happening. Everyone's bored. Inside. What are you talking about, Mom? Said Paige. This is it. This is what we've been looking for, Paige. It's all here. The planet where humans could one day live. We could live here. We've done it. We've fulfilled our mission. Outside. Nothing is happening. Everyone has practically fallen asleep. Why do we keep coming back here? Inside. But mom, said Finn, it doesn't feel right. There's something bad going on here. Do Do not not disrespect disrespect your mother, mother, Finn. Finn. This time the voice came from Finn's mother and the other voice, the man on the stage, his eyes lighting up even brighter. You're not my mother, said Finn. Outside. There's nothing happening here. Go back inside already. Inside. She is your mother, said the man behind the desk. But now she belongs to me, just like you all will be mine very shortly. Outside. Everyone is asleep. Nothing is happening except for that shadow that is now creeping over the pod. 
All right, I am here with my editor and son, the young Griffin Messenger. Say hi to everybody, Griff. Hi, hi. Hello. And what did you think of that episode, Griff? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. And uh, do you have any questions about it? I wonder what that shadow was and what that guy is doing done to Finn's mom. So the first thing is the shadow. You mean the shadow that went over the pod at the end? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Boo. Well, I mean, this is not spoiler club, Griff. I'm not just going to tell you what something is. Boo. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so obviously something else outside the building is coming. It could be one of two things. It could be something bad that's coming to get them, or it could be the Marlowe showing up. As we heard, Genevieve Brooks was trying to track them down, right? Right. So which one do you think it is? I think it's something bad. Oh, all right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So you had another question. What was your other question? What that man did with Finn's mom. Yeah. What's the deal with that guy? Yeah, like glowing eyes and Finn's mom acting weird. Does that guy make you think of anything? Uh, the head of the city. And we'll wrinkle in time where they find the dad and who hypnotizes. All right. Well, hey, don't, don't spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for uh, <laughs> for wrinkle in time. Really? We, we don't want to give away the ending. In case I know, I know some listeners are reading along with the show, so we don't want to say what happens at that point. But you're right. That character is a character inspired by one in a wrinkle in time. Mm-hmm. But we won't know until next episode. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> We're on season three. You should know by now that there are more episodes. Boo. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to talk about with the last, the bonus episode? I wonder why Cloco uh, stole Voltronix's arm. I think he was just playing a prank on him. <laughs> I think yeah. Voltronix, because Voltronix's arm was still disconnected from the accident. And so I think Robo Cloco just hit it on him as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? No. Then you know what time it is. Art. That's right. It's art time. All right. This week, our thanks go out to the artist, chefs, Adam, who's nine from California, five-year-old twins, Malcolm and Emmett from Portland, Oregon, Bowden, who's six, and Oren, who's four from Trempolo, Wisconsin, Eli, who's six from Midway, Georgia, Elby, from Arlington, Virginia, Will, who's seven from Oregon, Jesse, who's seven from Montreal, Jacob from Hamilton, New Jersey, Elizabeth and Julian, who are ten and six from Los Angeles, California, Ezra, who's six from Buda, Texas, Estelle, who's five from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Emmett, who made us a Christmas cookie, Stanley, who's six from Memphis, Tennessee, Griffin, who's nine from Pittsburgh, North Carolina, hey, another Griffin, Layla, who's four, and Jacob, who's seven, who live in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Maggie, who's eight, from Cary, North Carolina, Carmen, who's ten, and Brian, who's four and three quarters, from New Zealand, Alexa, who at the time she emailed us was 4.95 years old, I'm guessing we can now round up Alexa, who's five, happy birthday, Alexa, our pal Emma Rogers, Victoria, who's six, from Bourne, Texas, Ellie, who's 12 from Abu Dhabi, and Milo, whose art got lost in the shuffle a couple of months ago, but who drew us an alien Santa. So thanks so much for that, Milo. All right, thank you so much to all of our artists, and now it's time for... <laughs> no, it's time for what? Jokes. Jokes, that's right. Okay, first up is our pal Baron. From London, England. This is Baron Onion from London. What kind of combat training do aliens do? Martian arts. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Baron. And now we have a joke from Weber. Hello, my name is Weber Andrews from Newport Beach, California. My joke is, what noise does a bee bop make? Bzzz. Get it? Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Weber. I know Bebop will love that joke. All right. Well, thanks to all of our comedians today, too. And anything else you want to talk about today, Griff? Okay. 
SoundCloud episode is coming up soon. Definitely. Promise. SoundCloud episode is coming up soon. Yeah, we'll do a SoundCloud episode before this season wraps up, okay? Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for listening. And want to say goodbye to everybody, Griff? Bye-bye. Bye! <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Okay, thanks for coming back and having some more fun with us this week. And thanks to everyone who has sent in their art, their ideas, their jokes, their sounds, their answers to this season's puzzles. Really, really, really appreciate it. If you thought there will be no more puzzles or riddles this season, even though we're wrapping up in just a few weeks, you're going to be surprised. Or maybe you won't now that I said that, but you would be surprised if you thought we were done with the riddles and puzzles. We still have at least one big one coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian is a Gen Z kids production written and produced by Jonathan Messenger, edited and guided by Griffin Messenger with special thanks to Maria Villanueva. The theme music you hear at the beginning and end of every show is by Mark Greenberg, the nicest human in the multiverse. And of course, our cover art is by Sir Ian Dingman. For more information about the music, the art, everything about this show, check out the show notes. Thanks again so much for listening, and we will see you next week. Maybe if I put these rocks in his slippers, humans 200 years from now will be able to teleport. It's worth a shot.